morning guys we're back on the Mitamita River again today um, it's a beautiful beautiful morning um, there's a bit of a hatch going off at the moment um, seen a few little fish sort of rising and slashing it looks like there's um, both mayflies and caddis around uh, so yeah it's a lovely morning um, I'm gonna fish the uh, nine foot five weight today um, with a single-handed spay line on, so I might still do a little bit of spay casting single-handed. Um, I'm just going to fish a team of nymphs, uh, mostly downstream and across to start with. So on the top, I've got this little brown bead head. <clears throat> it's in about a 14. Uh, and then on a little dropper about six inches below that, I've got a very small little green nymph, about a 16. So uh, I hope that's in focus. And you can see that. <clears throat> so I can see a little fish um, rising just out here. They're sort of jumping and splashing around on the surface, obviously trying to take these, uh, I think they're little mayflies in, uh, in mid-flight just above the surface. So uh, I might take the nymphs off just to start with and put a little uh, tan sort of uh, dun pattern on and see how we do with that, see if we can get something to take a dry. Okay. So I've just changed over to this little uh, tan, light brown uh, dun pattern. And um, let's see how we go. We'll see if we can sneak up on these fish and get some casts in. Alright, I'm going to try and keep down quite low as we approach the river here because it's pretty open. It's going to be fairly easy to uh, spook the fish here. There were actually fish rising and jumping all over the place. So I had high hopes that I should be able to hook something here. He took it, and I was too slow on the, on the take. The trout were happily splashing about everywhere, seemingly quite oblivious to my presence. These fish are actually taking insects in mid-air. <laughs> so, they don't seem to be taking much fly at the moment. I'm not quite sure how to imitate that. All right. I'm going to change over to a caddis pattern, see if we can uh, get a response from that. I might have been on the right track with the caddis here. I was speaking to a local guide later on, and he told me that when the fish are taking caddis in the air, like these were, the best way to target them is to skate a caddis pattern across the surface. Even so, I was still managing to get a few takes, at least. If only they would stay connected. Slow. I got the take, but I missed the strike. Fish just a little bit further forward over here. Let's see if I can get a shot at him. Watch what happens here as I lose focus when the drift goes on for a little longer than I was hoping. The moment that I decide to adjust my backpack, the fish strikes, and it's just as well that I didn't connect because with the strike that I did, I think he would have ended up in the trees behind me. Oh! Damn it. I felt, he felt the hook, but he didn't stay attached. It's only small. I don't think he was quite big enough to get that fully down. <laughs> All right. Well, he definitely felt the hook, so he's not gonna be back. There's another fish rising a little bit further down. We might go and try him. This is the fly that I'm using. It's called a championship caddis. Um, yeah, seems to be getting a couple of takes, although it's a little bit difficult because the fish are actually focused in and feeding on insects in the air. They're <laughs> jumping clear of the water and taking, uh, taking caddis in the air. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I saw a fish rising further down before. Oh, one just in front of us here. Might have a quick cast at him. These are mostly fairly small fish, so getting them to take the fly is one thing, but actually getting them to stay hooked is another. Nice little rise out over 
there too. I might focus on him actually, because I think these fish close to us. Probably seen the fly quite a bit already. So we're going to move a little bit further down. Um, the bite's sort of slowing down a little bit now. There's not as many fish rising. Um, these are mostly quite small fish uh, that are rising on the caddis. I have seen the odd sort of slightly better fish, but when I say slightly better, you're probably not talking any more than a pound, probably a little less. So they're not big fish. Um, but let's see if we can get a few more bites. So, uh, you know, you guys, I, I should clarify what I'm trying to do with these videos. Um, I guess I start by saying I'm not the world's greatest trout fisherman. Um, I have done some trout fishing on fly, and I do know a bit, but there are certainly guys out there who know a hell of a lot more than I do. Um, so what I want to try to do is take you through my, my thought process while I'm fishing and um, hopefully in that process you can learn with me rather than from me if that makes sense. So I'll probably make plenty of mistakes and, uh, and I hope that I'll learn from them and I hope you guys will as well. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's keep on going. Uh, I'll persist with the, uh, the caddis dry for a little bit longer and see if we get anything. Um, oh fish rising fish rising out there all right I might have to fish or have to figure out what the best presentation is going to be to them maybe I can get a little bit downstream of them but I'm not going to have an open cast from down there that's the thing so maybe I'll try here a little bit and see if I can fish downstream to them get them to see the fly first um, the problem is when they, whether they're going to see me in the process. All right, we'll give it a go. There's a fish over the far side there, and uh, if I get down this bank a little bit further there, I'm not going to be able to get a, cost, a cast across to him. So there was, there was one fish rising out there just a second ago, and another one in closer in here. So I'll probably try the close one first. There he goes again. I'll probably try the closer one first as he's most likely to spook and then I'll, I'll see if I can get a cast over to the further one after that. There was another fish out there rising earlier as well. So there's plenty around. As I made my way out, the fish was still happily splashing around on the other side and I got a better look at him. That fish rising out further out there is a better fish. present to him first. A bit short. Fishing downstream with a dry fly is not something that you see all that commonly. It can work, it can be effective in some situations, but the biggest challenge is that after you cast, the current starts taking the fly away from you and straightening out the fly line and leader. And pretty soon, your fly will start to drag across the current in an unnatural way. I'm trying to get the longest drift that I can without drag. It's a little bit difficult when you're fishing down and across with the dry. Missed him. That was a little, little fish. It wasn't a good one. One of my favourite casts when I'm fishing on a trout river is called the snake roll. This is it coming up now. 
It's a type of spay cast, and it's a great way to quickly change direction and reposition the line back upriver after it's been taken downstream by the current. All right, well, they seem to have shut down a little bit. I guess they know I'm here. Unfortunately, I think the takes that I'm getting are just from very, very small fish, and they're probably not getting the fly completely down. Um, it's either that or I'm too slow on the strike, but I, I suspect it's the, it's the former. Um, if I could get a good fish to, uh, to take it, it would probably be a better chance. But this seems to be mostly uh, very small fish feeding at the moment, with just the odd reasonable one in between. So, move down river a bit, maybe persist for a little bit longer, and then I'll probably switch over to the nymphs soon. All right, so I've come to a little spot here. Looks like there's a nice, uh, slightly deeper run on the other side of the river over there. Um, I'm not sure how much you can see into the water there, but it's basically shallow banks on this side until about halfway out. And then it looks like there's a bit of a deeper hole on the other side. So I might just throw a few flies over there just to see if there's uh, anything that I can get to come up. Him. Damn it. Fishing these very slow, still pools in the middle of a bright, clear day like this is always going to be a challenge, especially if you're wading in the water like I am here, because there's no clear cast from the bank. The chances are any good fish out there is going to know that you're there and be spooked by your presence. I was still managing to get some interest, but looking back on it now, I think they were probably small fish, and in reality, fishing this very clear, still water in the middle of the day was low percentage fishing. Well, another mistake in there. This time uh, I did feel his weight again, and uh, he was a, a small fish that time, very small. So, uh, yeah. We'll keep heading down. I'm not sure if I'll persist with the caddis for much longer. I think I might change back to the nymphs and try nymphing down and across. The sun's well and truly up now. It's getting bright and clear, so I would say the bigger fish are most likely going to start moving into the deeper holes. There's a good looking run coming up down here. Let's see if we can get in and uh, fish the top of that with a nymph down and across for a couple of nymphs. I'm just going to Get out in this little run here and see if we can just do some down and across uh, nymphing and see how we go. Before I jumped in the water and started fishing here, I did fish that little inside seam from the bank where the fast water meets the slow water coming around the branches. But I didn't get any interest. A nice little seam just on the right hand side down here that I might try and swing the nymph into. The seam is the line where the fast water meets the slow water beside it. Trout love these spots as it gives them somewhere that they can sit with loads of food coming past but they don't have to expend too much energy sitting out in the main current. So they sit along the seams in the slower water, wait until they see a tasty morsel come past and then duck out into the current and eat it, then go back into their resting spot again. This faster running water was a much better prospect than the clear still pools that I'd been fishing earlier today. And in retrospect, I probably should have switched over and started targeting this type of water sooner. So I'm just doing a little bit of short line nymphing here, try and get the, nymph down, the nymphs down a bit deeper in this run. Won't be able to go too much further because it's starting to get deep. So I might start swinging down and across again now. So I'm just pulling a little bit more line off with each cast, trying to swing another, uh, you know, five or six feet down down the river. 
cover the water. And when it gets to the end of the string, I'm just working the rod back and forth a little bit to get the nymphs to rise up in the water column and then drop back again like a, a nymph that's coming up to emerge. Just mending out towards the far side of the uh, of the run there. Try to get a good swing on the end, get a good drift. Let's give this deep run a go. Uh, still got the nymphs on. I don't have an indicator, so I'm just going to have to do my best to keep in touch with the fly. Casting across to the other side of the river and fishing a current line over there is always difficult, even in slow moving water like this. The problem is that you're casting across currents that are moving at different speeds and trying to stay in touch with your fly and get a natural drift with the nymphs is next to impossible. I was doing my best, but even so, I think the chances of this working were relatively low. I probably could have spent my time more productively. All right, we'll keep moving on down. Well, we'll just try down here a little bit. There's a nice slow, deep bubble line over the far side of the pool there. I'll just keep moving down and swing some nymphs through that. Let's see if we can get anything there. All right, keep on moving down. I'm not having much luck with the nymphs at the moment, but uh, we'll persist for a little bit. Let's see what we get. I might just hop in and uh, turn over a few little rocks and see if we can see what sort of nymphs, if any, are in the water. There's something pretty small there. There's both caddis and mayfly flying around, so it'd be a pretty good guess that there's going to be caddis and mayfly nymphs here but it doesn't hurt to have a look and just check out the size and color oh there's something yep that's a little brown mayfly nymph probably about a size 14 12 or 14 there he is so he's a sort of dark brown little mayfly nymph you can tell he's a mayfly by the three little um uh, the sort of tail that splits into three there. Mayfly nymph that I've got on, just a little brown bead head. It's probably a reasonable, reasonable approximation of that uh, mayfly nymph. Well, I might have had a take on the first uh, drift through that uh, little run, I think. There was a definite stop on the leader. I saw a little bump first of all, but then a definite stop. Uh, I struck and there was nothing there, so it's possible it could have been a fish and he might have uh, spat it out before I struck, or it might have just been the fly catching something on the bottom. But uh, if in doubt, when you're nymphing, strike. So I've just made a slight change to my rig here. Um, I've still got the, uh, the little mayfly nymph on, the brown one, but I've changed the dropper. I've got a, about a 30 centimeter dropper and then I'm going to put an olive woolly bugger on the point um, to see if that sort of swings a little bit better. I'm hoping that perhaps the bigger uh, woolly bugger might attract some fish from further away and they might either take that or they'll see it, come over and have a look and then take the nymph. I've seen a couple of rises happening down in this run in, in front of us here. Um, just got to try to figure out what the best position is to uh, get in and get a cast at these fish without spooking them. 
So I'll just have a look around the bank here and see if there's a spot where I can fish for them from the bank. It's quite still water here. So uh, probably very easy to spook the fish if I get in. It's just a question of whether I can get a clear cast from the bank somewhere. There's a bit of a clearing here. There's a few trees and so on in the background, which might make back casting a little bit difficult, but we'll see how we go. Well, here I was getting distracted by these rising fish again. It's pretty natural for trout fishermen to get excited when we see a rise. We all dream of days catching trout on a dry fly. But in reality, on this particular day, these fish were probably only a matter of a few inches long. It was a low percentage chance of me catching them, and in reality, I was probably wasting my time. Just struggling today. Uh, it's very bright and clear now. There's fish, uh, a couple of fish started to rise again. Looks like there's a little bit of a caddis hatch coming off again. But, um, yeah, I'm just not getting them. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. I'll stick with it. And, uh, yeah, just got to persist, I suppose. Anyway, I'll have a break and have a bit of lunch and then continue. I've just been uh, sitting back and looking at the river for a bit. There's a fish rising uh, out in the bubble lane just out there coming up every now and again um, I'm not entirely sure how big he is he might only be tiny but I'm gonna try and get in and have a cast at him I've still got the woolly bugger and the nymph on so we'll see if that uh, draws a response <clears throat> but I'm gonna have to get in and probably wait out a little bit to try to get a cast at him which is difficult um, because it might spook the fish but I'm just going to have to give it a go. Here I was again, wasting more time on the wrong water. I needed to just keep walking past this big slow still pool and find some moving water instead, which was much more likely to be productive and hold active feeding fish, especially the decent sized ones. The chances of me catching anything in these conditions wading out in the water in full sun like this must have been very low indeed. Oh, still no result. There's a couple of small fish out there uh, rising, taking caddis again, I think. They're only very tiny. Alright, push on. Maybe we need to try some uh, faster water, deeper water at the head of pools. Um, maybe it's just that uh, this time of day the bigger fish are, uh, are not out feeding. And they're waiting until uh, late afternoon, low light, for that um, feeding window. Anyway, or maybe it's just that I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs> so I'll, uh, it looks like it's not very fishable um, from my bank here, so I'm just going to wade across and down this little bit and see if I can fish the top of this next one um, from towards the other side of the river. There's a nice little drop off here where this uh, sort of flows into the top of a deeper pool and try around the top of that and then swing the flies sort of down through this nice little run here that runs along the deeper bank and uh, against the shore. Now this is much better looking water. I should have realised earlier in the piece that this was the kind of water I needed to be targeting. And looking back at it now, even though I've cut this footage down quite a lot, I could have spent plenty more time covering this water more thoroughly. When the water is moving fast like it was in this run, you need to get the fly closer to the fish, because they won't move as far to take an item of food in the stronger current. So I could have put a lot more casts in here, trying to cover every likely spot that a trout might hold. I lost my fly in that willow over there. Uh, so I've got to retie 
I might try putting on a, uh, a tungsten head nymph this time, a heavier one. See if I can get a bit deeper and uh, yeah, see if that helps. Okay, so this is quite a deep run where I'm fishing. So I've put on a uh, tungsten head nymph. It's a brown mayfly pattern. Um, and then on the other nymph, I've also got a bead head. This one is a green and black, that's a caddis pupa. Anyway, let's see if that makes any difference. The idea is well, I'm gonna try and get down deeper with the nymphs. Let's see if it does any good. Finally now, I was doing something that had a reasonable chance of success. I was fishing in the right spot and I was using the right flies for the job. It took me quite a while to arrive at it and it didn't necessarily guarantee that I was going to have success straight away. But at least now, I was using the right approach and I just needed to persist with it. This was a very deep run and it was a bit difficult for me to tell if I was getting down deep enough with the flies. I started to hit bottom at least a couple of times which was a good sign because then I knew that I had my flies getting deep enough to catch fish that might be sitting right down on the bottom. I might have possibly had one uh, take there, I'm not 100% sure. Could have just been the, the flies catching on the bottom. So uh, I've been doing sort of a combination of short line nymphing here, or, or Euro nymphing, trying to get it down deep. Um, and uh, and then sort of to doing swinging down and across as well. Just sort of mixing it up a bit, trying to get the most out of the rig that I can and fish as much of the water column as possible. Anyway, so we'll move down and try a little bit down here in this bubble line. again snagged up on the bottom this time all right try something maybe i might try tying on a bead head woolly bugger and uh swing that one of the things today has been that i haven't seen a single good sized fish all of the fish that i've seen so far the ones that have been rising or you know jumping and taking caddis and stuff out of the air have all been small I haven't seen any good ones, so I'm not quite sure why that is, whether they're just hanging under the banks or uh, sitting down right in the, the deep bottom of the pool sulking, waiting until the low light period. Yeah, I, I just don't know. This looks quite nice. This little one at the top of the pool there and then gentle slow bubble line on the drop off there. We'll give this a try. Try swinging the woolly bugger first, and then maybe switch over to nymphs. And after that, I'm gonna head back to the car because I've run out of water now. I need to rehydrate. Guys, I've re-rigged, so I've got a yarn indicator up top, and I've got a brown bead head on first, and then an unweighted brown nymph trailing after it, like that. So, let's see how we go. We'll fish through this run, give it a go, and then we'll head back to the car. On the first drift through the pool with the nymphs, the indicator did something a little bit strange, and I picked up, but there was nothing there. I thought that the flies had probably just hit the bottom, but then the second drift that I put through the run, suddenly the indicator went down and forward, 
and this time it was unmistakable. Yes, fish on. Finally, I was in the right place at the right time using the right technique. It took me a while to get there, but at least I had eventually figured out what I needed to do on this particular day to catch the fish. It would have been better if it hadn't taken me so long to figure it out. But then again, you don't always immediately work these things out when you're fishing new water and when you haven't been trout fishing for a while. Finally! And sometimes it's the failure that you learn from more than the success. It sure felt good after all the effort that I'd put in to finally bring a fish to the net. Well, there we go. He took the unweighted brown nymph on the point. This guy, pretty much first good drift that I had through there, he took it. So, it was all about just getting that presentation right. There we go. That's just slipped out as a uh, barbless hook. All right, beautiful little brown trout. He's not very big. He'd probably be 30 centimeters. Anyway. Nice little fish. I'll uh, pop him back. Let's go and release him. I don't want to keep him out of the water for too long. All right. There he is. Lovely little fish. Just let him get a bit of air through his, through his gills. Bit of water. There. Off he goes. Nice. Oh, well, we sure had to work hard for him. <laughs> but I suppose the moral of the story is persistence pays. And if you're doing something that's not working, um, try something different. Keep changing until you find something that's working. All right, we'll do a little bit more of that. Nymph a little bit more of this run and then we'll head back to the car. Down around the next bend, I ran into the local guide who was fishing on his day off. We chatted for a bit and fished back up the river for a little way together. So to do that over there, you actually want to come out. Yeah. And short line, as in yeah, yeah. more you check style. Yeah, I did that earlier. I, I saw short line this whole yeah. section. You get that nymph down. Yeah. You cast him across this current. Yeah. yeah. Um, I won't get down. You mind if I come in around you and fish up the top there? Play that hey? You get the inside there. Yeah, yeah. Try not to put my shadow on the water. Don't physically get too close to that corner. Yeah. That's where I'll be. Yeah. Push up in there. Yeah. Inside of those bends, always play them before you go to anywhere deep. Yeah, yeah. That was nice. I ran into uh, the local guide on the river there, uh, Scott McPherson from Indulgence Fly Fishing. He uh, he guides out of Eskdale, um, around the Mitter and the surrounding rivers. And uh, yeah, nice bloke. Had a little bit of a fish with him. He offered me a few tips, which was really nice. So if you're in the area and you're looking for uh, somebody to take you out, yeah, look him up. Scott McPherson, Indulgence Fly Fishing. Uh, we're just getting into, uh, towards the magic hour now. Sun's getting low. Probably can't see too much there except the sun. But um, getting a few shadows, long shadows on the water now. And um, hopefully we're going to get an evening rise soon. So I might... Um, I'm just back at the car getting some extra water, having a little bit of a break. And I'll probably take the nymphs off and uh, tie on a dry and maybe an emerger or something and uh, see if we can get something on the evening rise tonight. I made a bit of a rookie error though. I realised I got back to the car and I've left my head torch back at the, uh, the caravan park, which was pretty stupid. <laughs> so I won't be able to stay out too late. Um, and if I uh, lose my fly, I have to retire, then I'm going to be in trouble. 
because um, I haven't really only got my iPhone as a torch. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how we go. So I've just, uh, I've taken the nymphs off and I've put on a small championship caddis, which is a little deer hair and CDC caddis pattern. And on the point, I've got a little gray CDC emerger. So hopefully that'll cover uh, fish that are eating on top of the film and in the film. The shadows got longer and the light got lower as the day slipped into the magic hour on the river. The evening rise is such a nice time to fish and it can be very productive. That is, if you can figure out what the fish are feeding on. The same trout that I had started on this morning were now feeding with gusto. The little circular ripples that indicated their rises spreading all over the pool. You can put quite a lot of casts over fish rising like this and not get any response if you are not matching what they are feeding on fairly closely. If there's a lot of food on the water, then that can present a challenge too, as the fish can become quite lazy and only take the items that drift directly down their feeding lane. I was putting in a lot of casts to rising fish and I was getting the occasional take. But just like this morning, I couldn't seem to stay connected. I had a few takes that I missed and I couldn't really figure out why I wasn't hooking these fish. It got harder to change flies as the light disappeared, but I did try a couple of different patterns until I settled on a small tan coloured bun. Just as the last glow of the sun started to fade over the horizon, I came up tight to a fish that felt pretty solid. As soon as I felt his weight though, I felt the hook pop off the end of the leader and that was it for my day. Finally tempted one on the dry fly. I felt his weight and he must have been okay because he actually popped the fly. All right guys, I'm back at the car now. It's uh, too dark basically to fish and I've got no head torch. Uh, so look, that was a tough day. I worked my ring off for one brown on the nymph I hooked a reasonable fish at the end there, um, on a dry, but popped the leader. Um, apart from that, it was slim pickings. There was a lot of um, small fish around, a lot of very small ones. Um, but the one that I caught and the one that I hooked were probably the only two good sized fish that I uh, encountered today. So that's fishing sometimes. Um, I'm not quite sure what they were on tonight. I think they were on something very, very small when they were rising this evening and uh, the caddis and then the, the little um, dun pattern that I was casting wasn't really doing the trick. Anyway, um, you know, that's fishing. You've just got to persist sometimes and uh, learn from the tough times. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you next time.